What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we've got two videos left in our series of my personal 2024 rig rundown. And in today's video, what we're going to be looking at, of course, is exposure suits. I've got several different undergarments that I wear for dry suits. I've got several different dry suits and several different wetsuits that I wear for different purposes. We're also going to be looking at hoods, gloves, and boots as well in this video. And this will give you a better explanation of what I'm wearing and why I choose to wear it and what type of diving I'm doing with those exposure suits. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. All right, guys, as we can see, I've got a ton of different dry suits, a ton of different wet suits. I've got a ton of different neoprene accessories, hoods, boots, and gloves. We're going to be taking a quick look at each and every one of them. Now, there are going to be some here that we're not going to look at for a couple of reasons. One, some of it's my daughter, some of it's equipment I don't use anymore or suits I don't wear anymore, and some of it's just spare that I use for private students as well. But we're just going to be looking at the exposure suits that I actually wear in 2024. I'll explain what it is, what type of diet. And I do with it and what I really like about it as well. So with that being started, said, we're going to start right over here with my dry suits. So let's just briefly run through each of the dry suits really quick and we'll kind of make this their own little segment here. But start now, I've got the Scuba Force Expedition. This has the red overlay. This is a front entry model tri-laminate suit. Does have the slimline boots pre-attached. You guys know I love pre-attached boots on my dry suits. I also have added the glove lock system from SciTech here. Does have the quick change wrist seals, quick uh, chain or quick change neck seal as well. And it does have a P-valve. So what do I wear this for? Of course, this is for solo diving, cold weather diving where I do want to be comfortable. And I do wear it occasionally for salvage and public safety work, things like that. And you've probably seen this suit quite a bit on TV because this is the one I wear for deep water salvage. Moving over is just a pair of... Uh, Waders there, we're not going to really look at those, but I do use those occasionally if I'm one of the surface guys, and they're just camo waders from Frog Togs. And then, of course, moving on down is my bi-laminate suit. Now, this is from a company called OS Systems. It is a front entry, but it's a horizontal front entry. And I'll link down below the video that I did previously on all these suits as well, so you can kind of see how I get in and out of them. I'll throw you a little clip up here, too, just so that you can see it's not that difficult getting in and out of a horizontal dry suit. But it, it's bi-laminate. It, too, has pre-attached boots. These are what they call their polar boots. And then, of course, like I said, it's a horizontal front entry. I really like this suit. does have the quick change neck seal and wrist seals. And, of course, I've got the glove lock on it, too. And a cool feature about that, I can change these gloves out for these or these gloves out for these, and they work the same. If I need an extra set of gloves, just about everybody on our team have the glove lock, and I can just take their gloves, snap it on the suit, and go. So it makes it really useful. Speaking of team, that's exactly what I wear this suit for. This is my hazmat suit. This is what I wear for public safety diving, commercial diving. Um, it's a little bit more stouter than the tri-laminate, so it's going to hold up better if I brush up against something, uh, but it's not quite as flexible. So that's what I wear for public safety and salvage work and commercial work. Next up, of course, is my go-to. Now, I absolutely love this dry suit. This is from Comfort Zone Scuba. This is a neoprene dry suit. You'll see it, too, has the polar boots pre-attached. And it's just a 7 mil pre-crushed down to a 3 mil dry suit. does have a zipper across the back here. This is a horizontal uh, zip across the shoulders. Um, I love this suit. I love a neoprene dry suit. If I could only have one and I didn't have to work for a living, it would be a neoprene dry suit because if it ever fails, it just resorts back to being a wetsuit and we know a wetsuit that's properly fitted will keep you warm and I love this suit I barely have to wear any type of undergarments with it um, just because it is so warm as well the only downside there's no p-valve there's no relief zipper and I can't get in and out of the suit by myself in the sense that um, you've got to have somebody else zip it up for you unlike the other two so that's about the only downside but what do I wear this for I wear it for comfort I wear it for warmth I wear it for any cold water diving when I've got a dive buddy and it's not crucial that I can get in and out of the suit by myself uh, I love wearing this in the winter time when I side mount dive because it's got plenty of flexibility and it keeps me warm so yeah I love this suit for recreational technical side mount back mount whole nine yards like I said if I could only pick one dry suit out of all of them it would be my neoprene dry suit so now that we understand what dry suits I wear let's take a quick look at my undergarments to see what keeps me warm in these dry suits. 
All right, first up on the list is from Scuba Force. This is just their what they call the X-Basic. It is nothing fancy. It is just a single layer fleece suit here. And it's not even a full suit. It's just a long sleeve top. So all it is, it's got like a mock turtle up top there. And I do have the matching pants as well. It's just a single layer uh, fleece pant. It does have the drawstring. Um, and I actually wear it with all three suits. Now, previously in a dry suit, uh, video series that we did I showed you that I had multiple undergarments that I wore depending on what suit I've wore well here recently I've got rid of all that and all I'm wearing now and I can actually wear that undergarment with all of these suits and which is exactly what I'm doing so if I need just a little bit of warmth not much just enough to keep the material off of me this is what I'm going to be using right here. It's the X Basic from Scuba Force. It's just a really thin layer top and really thin layer pants. And I can even wear it on land. I can wear it as an undergarment here on land just to keep me warm, say, at the top of the dive side. And occasionally I do that as well. If I'm going to be a surface crew guy during the day, that's exactly what I wear. Moving on over to the thick suit. This is the X Pure from the same company. This is Scuba Force here. And this is a dual layer fleece jumpsuit okay it's just one solid jumpsuit it is extremely thick extremely warm extremely hot um, and it's a dual layer fleece so that means there's fleece with a little bit of batten in it and then more fleece uh, it's got a couple of pockets which i really like if you're on land you can, uh, keep your hands warm or whatnot it does have these little thumb tabs which i use since i do have the dry glove system i use these thumb tabs to go through my seal so that i can get air into my uh, glove there but yeah it's got a little access point here for my p valve so now i can use either side whichever one yeah i really really like that suit it's a one and done system i don't have to wear multiple things just to stay warm when i'm underwater and right now it's still cold where we're at that's the suit that i'm wearing under my dry suits now i do want to make a quick note i don't wear the x pure under th this one it's just too thick and i don't need that much but like i said i can use a single layer fleece jumpsuit for my dry suit or for my neoprene dry suit as well all right next up is my ultra skin top and what do i actually use this for um Caribbean diving actually just a pair of swimming trunks and this ultra skin top from Mares here It's a long sleeve top. I really truly love this thing. You probably saw this in our Cosmel videos I just had a pair of swimming trunks and that on and that's all I really wear in the tropics now to me tropical water is let's say 80 degrees and uh, Warmer anything below 80 degrees. I will drop down to standard neoprene but uh, I really, truly love this ultra skin top. I've actually got the pants and the shorts to match that, but I rarely, rarely wear them. So just the ultra skin top is great for tropical water. Uh, I'm not too much worried about brushing up against stuff just because I got good buoyancy and good trim. But for me, the ultra skin top is perfect for Caribbean diving. And I do want to show you another one as well here. If I scroll through, there's the pants you'll see. There's the shorts that you'll see as well. I've also got the ultra skin hooded vest. So it's a sleeveless vest, but it's got a pre-attached hood on it. And I really truly like that too for the tropics. If I don't need long sleeves, I'll wear that and have the benefit of having a hood. But what I actually use that ultra skin uh, hooded vest for is I wear it under say a three mil or a five mil. It gives me just a little bit of extra insulation on the core and it has that pre-attached hood that I can pull on and off as needed. So that's my ultra skin systems that I wear for extremely warm water or if I need to add a little extra layer and I want a pre-attached hood. All right, guys, next up is my three mil or two and a half as Mares claims. This is just a Mares Inflex. This is nothing really, truly fancy. Um, it's just a three mil suit. You can see mine's pretty faded out. If you've watched some of our older videos, you'll hear me talk about how neoprene fades over time, especially in chlorinated water. And I'm in chlorinated water about five days a week. I teach scuba for a living and my suits you know they pretty much get beat up pretty bad uh it's actually time to replace this one it's already starting to break down it's elasticity i can tell now when i'm putting it on that the material is not as stretchy as it once used to be and the material starting to uh, come apart so it's actually time to replace that i will be replacing it here in the next few weeks but i just wanted to show you guys that is my three meal what do i use it for well 
I just mentioned it. I wear it in a pool. So anytime I'm teaching scuba, whether it's recreational, technical, whatever, if I'm in a pool, that is what I wear. Um, don't really need it. I, the pool that we use is indoor. It's heated. But, hey, I wear it. And, yeah, it's a pretty nice suit. Um, I do go through these about once every, let's say, three months. I get a brand new three mil uh, just because the, the chlorine that's in our pool just demolishes these suits doesn't matter how much you wash them how much you take good care of them the chlorine demolishes so i do get a new three mil about every three months and as of january 1st of this year that's when i actually picked that suit up so it's been about three months it's about time to get me a new one but that's my three mil that i wear for teaching in a pool all right guys so the next two suits that we're going to look at are both five mils one is a five mil semi dry so to speak the other one is more of a hybrid five mil um, this first one here they don't no longer make this is the mares 543 and mares if you're watching please start producing this suit again this was one of the best suits you guys have ever produced what do i mean by 543 well it's five here in the chest it's four from the shoulders to the elbows and then three to the wrist and of course four from the hips to the knees and then three down to the ankles and i love this suit you get the exact amount of warmth say for temperate waters you get five mil here in the chest you get four and three on the arms and legs just to give you a little bit of extra flexibility and i love this suit i wish marias would come back out with this um, because these were beasts. I love these suits. They also had the 865, but the 543 tend to be the perfect suit for temperate waters, and I truly love it. It is a back entry there, um, and it's not as difficult to zip up as what a 5 or a 7 mil is, say, to compared to a 3 mil. 3 mils are super easy to zip up on your own, but this 543 was absolutely phenomenal. So, Marez, if you're watching, please come back out with that suit. The next one, of course, is another 5 mil. This is the Marez Graflex, or as I call it, their version of a semi-dry. You'll see all the seams here are glued shut. The zipper is a little bit more um, sealed, if you will, than what a, a standard zipper is. And a really cool feature about this 5 mil, let me get it open here, is the liner. You see that liner in there? That keeps you extra, extra warm. So here's how I kind of explain this 5 mil compared to this 5 mil. This 5 mil is a lot better than this 3, but it's still for temperate waters. This 5 mil with the seams sealed, which basically makes it a semi-dry, and that liner on the inside of the suit... You know, this 5 mil is really kind of another style of hybrid. You see, you actually get the warmth of a 7, but you get the flexibility of a 5 mil. So I truly love this Graflex. I get the flexibility of a 5 mil. I get the warmth of a 7 mil. And I've actually had this thing down to about 55 degrees with the hooded vest that we looked at just a few minutes ago and been perfectly fine in 55 degree water. Now, to be honest with you, I would not die 55 degree water without one of my dry suits here. But that suit with the hooded vest got me by just fine in 55 degree water. And that was for an hour long and I didn't really get chilly at all. So that's the great thing about the Graflex. Now, if you are very cold natured in general and you want to jump it up, they do make this in a seven mil as well. So you can get a seven mil Graflex. Or if you don't really care about, you know, cold water you only dive warm water but you don't want to get chilly they even also make it in a three mil so that's the graflex series but my 543 and my graflex 5 from mares those are my go-to suits for comfort diving so if i'm not going to be in extremely cold water and i just want a little bit of extra warmth then i'll throw on one of these five mil and i have been known in the winter time to wear this 543 even in an indoor heated pool just because a lot of times when we come out it's a little chillier out of the pool than it is in so i'll wear it as well but that's my 543 and my graflex from the mares wetsuit line all right guys we're getting to the end here and i want to show you really quick some of the um, neoprene accessories that i wear as well uh, depending on what it is i'm doing i actually have two different hoods that i wear this one is from comfort zone scuba and you'll notice this is a full face mask dry suit hood it's a dry suit hood obviously because it doesn't have a bib on it but it's a full face mask hood it means my full face mask can seal to the hood itself uh, and i really like it this is a three mil i think you can get it in a three and a five and then this is a custom zip up hood if you will from OS Systems. It actually came with the orange dry suit there. And the zipper, I've tore the zipper out of it or tore the little zipper truck out, but I don't really need it. I've had this hood for a very long time. I've kind of outgrown it. My head's got a little bigger, uh, but I can still wear it. As long as I leave it unzipped, I can still wear it. It still gives me plenty of warmth. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work with a full face mask, so I don't wear it quite as much. But yeah, that is my go-to for hoods. 
And then, of course, glove of choice. If I need a neoprene glove, I use these. These are actually Akona gloves. And cool little fun fact for you, my store that I own, the scuba shop that I own, does not sell Akona. And everybody thinks I'm biased just to the gear that I sell. I'm not. Uh, I think Akona makes some great products, and I really, truly love these Akona gloves here. They're Kevlar lined on the bottom. There's no strap to get in the way, and they actually seal. What I actually wear these for is for this particular dry suit here. You see, I've got the seal skin technology for the wrist seals. This also has the seal uh, skin technology here on the seal itself, and it seals to it. And to be honest, my hands barely get wet if if even get wet at all. Now, if I tear a hole or something in them, of course, they're going to get wet. But with that seal skin there and the seal skin on the wrist of the suit, I rarely, rarely get wet anytime I wear these gloves here. And I absolutely love them. They're very warm. They're three meals. Yes, I wear a three meal even in extremely cold water, especially in that dry suit, that neoprene dry suit. And it keeps me perfectly warm as well. Now, moving over here to the boots that I'm currently wearing, it's the same Trilastic Mares five mil thick boots that I've wore for a very long time. Now, these are not the same ones from the previous video because just like my three mil that I go through every three months, I get a brand new suit. My boots are kind of the same way. I wear through these um, once they start breaking down the elasticity. And I do want to make a quick shout out to one of my dive masters, Mr. Dan. He bought me this boot dryer here. I'll be making a video on this boot dryer specifically because you guys are going to love this. It dries my boots in about an hour. And if you've been diving long enough, you will know one of the most difficult things to dry are dive boots. And this dryer here, it's called the Peak Dryer. It is phenomenal. So Dan, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. I love this thing. I use it all the time. You can dry socks, you can dry boots, but Nevertheless, I'll be making a video on this thing specifically. But getting back to the boots, these are the five mil from uh, Marez. These are the Trilastics. What that means is it's the hard bottom, tennis shoe bottoms. They got two different series. They've got the Flexes and they got the Trilastics. I actually like the Trilastics better. I think they're a little bit better than the Flexes. But you'll see they're already starting to fade here in the back. I'm starting to get some neoprene broke down. So it is time to replace these boots. I will be replacing them uh, as soon as I replace that three mil as well here in a couple weeks. And um, so, yeah, we should be good to go. So there you go guys, that will do it for my exposure systems that I'm currently using in 2024. Um, I definitely want you to stay tuned because our very next video will be the last one in this series where I'm gonna be showing you all the different dive accessories that I'm choosing to use in 2024. Now don't worry, it's not gonna be every accessory. You see all these boxes up here? That's nothing but accessories that I own. And I've got a whole storage unit up here in my attic as well that's full of dive accessories that I no longer use as well. I'm just just going to be showing you the ones that I'm using and I'll have it broke down into individual groups so you'll see the accessories I use for teaching you'll see the ones I use for recreational technical uh, public safety side mount the whole nine yards I'll have it broke down into the individual groups and we'll briefly go through it so I can keep the video as short as possible but I really hope you enjoyed today's video if you got any questions on any of these exposure systems dry suits undergarments wetsuits drop me a comment down below I'll try to help you if you need a link for any of these products I'll drop you a link down there as well and that way you can click on it read up study and see if it'll be right for you one thing i want you to take away from this guys and i've tried to do this in the entire video series is i want to show you if you're going to be a diver you are going to own multiple systems there is not just a one system that kind of works for everything depending on what you do now if you only cave dive and you got a cave system that works for you great if you only deep wreck dive and you got a wreck system that works for you great if you only public safety dive and you got a system great but if you're in the position I am where I do multiple types of diving, I have to have multiple types of gear. And if you want to dive year round, you're going to need multiple exposure systems as well. And that's what this video series is to show you all the stuff that we use throughout the year to keep us diving, to keep our skills sharp, and so that we can, you know, keep our enjoyment up as well. But guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Stay tuned. Like I said, we got one more video left in the series, and I really think you'll find it as interesting as well. But that's going to do it for me today. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.